To access the exam guide for the Salesforce Administrator Certification, you'll want to go to trailhead.salesforce.com and then under the Credentials drop-down, you'll find Certifications, so click there and the first landing spot you land on is the Administrator role for Salesforce Certifications. And so here are the related Administrator credentials, first of which is the Administrator exam, so click there and then from there, that's the landing page for the Administrator certification. The first link is get the exam guide. I'll link to this down below as well so you can hit this directly. So we're in the winter 22 release at the time of this recording and so a few things of note. I want to start off with the exam outline and that's where you'll find the individual knowledge areas and their corresponding weighting towards the 100% of the exam. And so the first knowledge areas configuration support followed by object manager and lightning app builder Third is sales and marketing applications. Fourth is service and support applications. Then we have productivity and collaboration, data and analytics management, and then finally workflow and process automation. So you can click on each of these links. That'll extend downward to reveal the various bullet points for each knowledge area. So these bullet points would be considered different learning objectives. I believe there's 26 of these in total for the admin exam. And Salesforce, back in 2021 in June sometime, did an update to this exam guide. There used to be 12 knowledge areas, I believe 34 learning objectives. They've pared that down to seven knowledge areas, 26 learning objectives. Now with each of these learning objectives slash bullet points, there's more than one topic oftentimes represented in each of these bullet points. You'll find in this first one here, for example, that is talking about being able to describe the information found in the company settings of your Salesforce org. For example, company settings, fiscal year, business hours, currency management, and default settings. That would be at least four to five different topics for that one learning objective. And so what I've done in dissecting this particular exam guide is I've identified each of the topics, not just the learning objective or bullet point, but the individual topics found in each of those bullet points and made video lessons on those. Also have a Salesforce self-assessment checklist and there's actually 102 topics found throughout this exam guide. And so if you want a copy of that self-assessment checklist, just check the link down below for that as well. Now, for this first knowledge area, it makes sense how Salesforce has decided to lay out the exam guide. They start with configuration and setup, and that's where you get started on the platform and you're really setting up your own organization and then from there you're setting up your security settings and then from there in the second knowledge area we've got to where we're getting into the data model of Salesforce and we're dealing with the object manager and lightning app builder starting to build out objects fields relationships applications page layouts record types those sorts of concerns and starting to get into business processes for custom and standard objects as well now once we've started dealing with the actual lightning app builder we're ready to then move move on to sales and marketing applications as well as service and support applications. These would be considered more sales cloud specific and then service cloud specific. On the sales and marketing side, that's where you're dealing with leads, for example, opportunities, contacts, accounts, campaigns. And then on the service side is where you're getting into case assignments, rules, and case management as well as the support process. Back on the sales and marketing application side, that's where you get into lead process and sales process. That's where you control the status designation on leads and the stages and opportunities. And then the support process would be the status designation on cases. And then you're also getting into auto response rules and case escalation rules, those sorts of concerns. Now, as you round things out, after service and support applications, you're getting into productivity and collaboration. This is a combination of several things that used to be individual knowledge areas in the previous iteration of this exam guide. That would be the capabilities of activity management, as well as the features of Chatter, as well as the capabilities of the Salesforce mobile app, and then also use cases for app exchange. And so all of those represent only 7% of the exam weighting, but each of those are pretty extensive areas of knowledge that you need to attain in order to even score the 7% on the exam. And so some are more straightforward than others as far as with app exchange just being knowledgeable in that you can install third party apps to extend the platform but other more wide-ranging concerns would be the mobile app of salesforce there's a lot of customizations you can do there there's a lot you can do with chatter as far as the chatter feed chatter streams topics via hashtags tracking field changes through chatter as well and then activity management just being sure you're aware of the different types of activity management things that can be done such as logging calls creating a task 
ask an event, sending emails. And so even though it's a small percentage, there is a lot to learn as it relates to these topics because you just don't know what you might be asked on the exam. So don't get too tripped up with these different percentages because you need to have a firm understanding and grasp of each of the knowledge areas, even those that are considered lower percentages. Now, in the final sections, we have data and analytics management. This used to be two different knowledge areas, data management would be one and then analytics management was the other. They've combined those together. It kind of makes sense, this grouping, because you can't really have analytics without data. You've got to have the underlying data before you can then analyze it through dashboard components and charts and reports. And so you'll see the second half of these later bullet points or learning objectives have to do with reports and dashboards. The topmost ones have to do more with data management. that has to do with updating, transferring, mass deleting, importing, exporting, backing up and data validation tools as well. And then the final piece of the puzzle for the admin exam would be workflow and process automation. That's where you're getting into the four process automation tools available on the platform, which would be approval processes, workflow rules, process builder, and flows. So even though flows are the future, you do still need to know a thing or two about workflow rules and processes via the process builder on the exam because we're still a good while out before those other automation tools are retired in favor of flows, but it is really being highlighted in the exam guide. Other areas of the exam guide beyond the exam outline are some high-level information about the actual exam and program, the audience description, the purpose of the exam guide. About the actual exam, that's where you'll find answers to your frequently asked questions as far as the number of questions and what type of questions they are. And there's also, please note, five non-scored questions on the exam. Your time allotted is 105 minutes, and your, here's your passing score, registration fee, retake fee. Delivery options are proctored either online or on-site at a testing center. Proctored just means someone is watching you to make sure you're not cheating. You can't have any hard copy or online materials, and there's no prerequisites for this particular certification. The vast majority of people start with the administrator exam to learn the fundamentals of the platform, and then typically branch off into one of three areas that would either be a platform app builder or potentially a consultant certification or developer certification. Then here at the bottom you'll find information around maintaining your Salesforce certification. So be sure and check out trailhead.salesforce.com. Visit the certifications section to get familiar with the different roles available and the certifications under each role as well. And if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below for what you'd like to learn next about Salesforce. I might make that my next video. And until then, I'll see you in the cloud.